Hi everyone, my name is Jenna Frios and I'm a research soil scientist at the USDA Agricultural Research Service in Temple, Texas. I'll be briefly talking to you today about one of the projects I conducted when I was working at the University of Idaho. To start, it is important to measure soil moisture in arid and semi-arid regions because future models predict severe droughts and a decrease in rainfall events by up to 40%. Much of Idaho was under a severe drought last year, and due to the lack of precipitation we received this winter, as well as so far this spring, um, we'll more than likely be under severe drought conditions again this year. The effects of management practices, such as reduced tillage, cover cropping, and manure application, have not been evaluated in semi-arid and irrigated crop production areas, similar to Southern Idaho. Research has shown that when manure is applied to the soil, it increases the amount of soil moisture. And this is partly due because the, um, you're adding organic matter to the top few inches of the soil. Research has also shown that cover cropping and reduced tillage practices may also improve the um, soil moisture storage. So for this study, we investigated the effects of cover crops, dairy manure, and tillage on soil physical characteristics in corn yield in silty loam soils in south central Idaho. The overall objective of this research was to determine if cover crops and dairy manure increase soil moisture or if cover crops are possibly depriving the cash crop of water. We also looked to see if infiltration runoff and yield were influenced by cover crops and dairy manure. So for this study site, um, it was started in 2016 and it was a six year project. Um, each year, silage corn is grown um, during the growing season and the winter cover crop um, is triticale. And the triticale was terminated prior to planting corn in the spring. There are four different treatments. There was the control that had no cover crop and no manure. We had cover crop only, manure only, and cover crop plus manure. Um, these fields were irrigated from mid-April until mid-October using hand lines, and solid dairy manure was applied in the fall after corn harvest. Um, in the first year, uh, manure was actually put on the, on the plots was in 2015, so right before uh, corn was planted in the following spring. And there are two different types of tillage. You had conventional tillage, which in this case was chisel and disc plow, and then we had a reduced tillage for strip till. So throughout the growing season, we measured soil moisture using a neutron probe and measurements were collected every two inches um, in the top 60 inches of the soil. We also used the Cornell sprinkle infiltrometer to measure the infiltration and runoff rates um, in these plots. So to go to the results, um, figure one is looking at the average soil moisture storage um, by treatment for each of the six years of the study in the top 12, 24, and 60 inches of soil. Overall, the cover crop plus manure plots tended to be much drier than the, the rest of the treatments. Um, similarly, if you look at figure two, um, this is looking at the rainfall before runoff. So how much water can infiltrate through the soil prior to runoff. And you see a similar trend of this time, uh, the cover crop plus manure plots are significantly higher. So it's able to take in more rain before runoff. And this also suggests that these, that when you have cover crops and manure, it's unfortunately drying the soil out um, a bit more than the other treatments. Figure three is looking at the um, average dry biomass yield for silage corn alone. Again, this is by treatment for each of the years. And for here, you can see that the control, the manure only, and the cover crop plots tended to have a higher yield than the cover crop plus manure. And when you combine the findings from figures one, two, and three, you can you're kind of under the assumption that although it's not much of a water loss um, compared to the other treatments, it seems as though the triticale may be depriving the silage corn um, from water throughout the growing season, even though it's terminated 
prior to planting corn. Um, and the biggest takeaway from this research was if you're using triticale as a winter cover crop, it would be beneficial if you're a farmer in a dairy system who's looking to increase the total dry biomass yields um, to increase the forage production. Although I didn't show this graph, when you look at the dry biomass yields for triticale plus silage corn, it is significantly higher um, by far under the cover crop plus manure plots. If you're a producer though, who's only looking to possibly increase your soil health, um, to increase the overall silage production on your field, planting triticale may not be the best cover crop to use um, to increase the overall silage production. Thank <laughs> you.